Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to Rugby M and I'm here in the barn in Warrington and normally we do go out obviously around the grounds but this week with all the potential outcomes we thought by the time you're watching this show on Wednesday night it'll all be done and dusted. We want it to be exclusive as we always are so I've come to meet some of the biggest personalities in the sport, get some exclusives and obviously discuss some fantastic careers. This week we're starting out in Warrington with this man, Tony Smith, a true legend of the game. I always believe, I really do believe, the only constant in life is change, and it's how open we are to that change de mm. depends on how successful we are. Don't matter how successful you've been, mm. things can just turn. I think one thing that's going to turn for this spot is how we how people consume media, how people, the broadcasting deal works. We've seen it now mm. that in five years' time, I don't think there'll be the same kind of influx money-wise from Sky so we've got to have a rethink and there's lots of things within the game we are in a flux of change as a game in my opinion everybody's got to work harder I'm not going to disagree with that hard work is you know where where most successes come from there's not very often it's just comes through uh, minimum effort you know almost always it's it comes down to uh, big efforts and good work ethic I, I just think it's time for a freshen, freshen up. I, I'm saying that about my club. Yeah, yeah. You know, they need a new face, a new voice, did, did you think a it, new leader. It time for a new voice. Yeah, and some new ideas. There needs, it, it's right for this club to do that, and and I, I think it's right for the team and the to get that. And it's the right time for me, so I can go and do some of the things that I want to do, and and um, you know that will set me my. Uh, you know, passions alight again in terms of, of my career. So it, it's important. But I think that for the sport too. Yeah. I, you know, that's what I've been saying lately. I, you know, I'm, I'm saying it because I'm, le I'm leaving soon and I'm maybe leaving the sport for a while. Who knows? I might get my passion back for it and want to come back and be involved again. Um, and by the way, I, I've got no inkling about running the sport or don't want to be involved in that. But I do know that it needs a freshen up. It needs some new dynamics, some new ideas, some new promotions, um, and and just some new direction. And you know, I was a, I was a big I was a big uh, supporter and fan of Richard Lewis. I thought he did tremendous work for our sport. He gave us some credibility. He got it back in order. Um, he got the business running smoothly and and in a respectful, respectable way. And I think that played a big part. And it was the right time for Richard to leave as well. It was, you know, he'd done his job and he moved on. I, I think we need to, you know, really consider uh, style and, and rules of play and, and how they've affected us. And, you know, I, I think there's a certain element of um, that we're way too conservative in the, the way we play. It's almost... You know that you've got to play the odds rather than, than you know take risk and, you know. But, and I'll even go as far as to say, with all you know the modern training techniques and that, we've probably got too many people on the park nowadays. You know, if there was less people on the foot on the rugby pitch, you may actually take more risk. We cover the park so easily, and you know, so it's in our own interest to, you know, not make a mistake, kick the ball into the far corner, and see if the opposition can go the length of the field. It all becomes. I'm, hey, listen, I'm I'm, I'm going to put in an exception there. I reckon Cass have played some real good style of rugby league this year, and I admire what they've done with the players that they've got. They've they've done exceptionally well, but I reckon I'll, the rest of us have probably been way too conservative and the rules are almost set that if you make mistakes well game over i i had a great meeting with nigel wood up at our uh, offices and he showed us a clip of tina turner and he said this sport really needs a tina turner moment uh, something to kind of change the whole outlook so so more people because i know I, I met her it was after one of our grand finals yeah i just I it like meeting tina turner we just lost the grand final, so I, I couldn't have given two flying, 
<laughs> wombats. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, which is a, sh a shame because I want, I so much wanted to meet her, but yeah. you know, the, the 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 misery of losing a grand final overshadowed even meeting Tina Turner. But I, you listen, I understand some of that. Um, it was a great promotion at the right time. Yeah, and that's great. what he says we need now. Yeah, he says yeah. We need something now to, yeah. to reinvigorate. Yeah. The 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 market. He's not the, far off. He's not yeah. far off in that respect. It was, it was the administrators that hired Tina Turner to do that ad. That's what we want. Yeah. That's actually what we want. It's not the Tina Turner. Yeah. It's it's the somebody. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's the somebody that's got the, the vision. The vision. The know who the it money. is. It must have cost oh, well, a lot of money. The money, but the vision of who it is, and what it is that we actually need. It's got to have a fit. Yeah. You know, and and her songs had a fit. Her style had a fit to rugby league. Yeah. You know, she she was raunchy and she had that real real passion. But I'm I'm going to say to you, it wasn't just about her. The real smarts was the person that hired her yeah. or the the people who were coming up with those thoughts. It's all well and good to, to say, yeah, I'd like to do that like they did. But it's coming up well, with like that. Well, like Bradford back in the day. What was Absolutely. Yeah. It, what was them? Uh, Pete Deacon. Pete Deacon, yeah. Absolutely. And, it, and, it, and he just had Absolutely. this vision. And he yeah. had, you know, Pete, what a fantastic bloke. And he did something but, different. And we need some of that dynamics within our sport. That's what I'm been saying in the last couple of weeks and you know we're ready for that our sport i think and we who that is who knows well you've got marwan kukash who is on one end of the scale sam man is very much the complete opposite we <laughs> sat in the barn i wanted to do it in here because in 2015 this opened and this facility mm. has been major for the club yeah. major for the community and it's one of them things where sam and moran who's done very well for himself, but ultimately is a, is a fan and is, is, is a chairman that, that will want success and I suppose demands success because of the levels he sets himself in his own business. But how has he been, um, <laughs> because from a, from a, from a music perspective, perspective mm -hmm. I know Simon is a tough man to work for. I know, that, <laughs> okay. I know that first hand yeah. from working for people that work for him. But what's he like to work for in rugby and what kind of a bloke is he to deal with for you mm -hmm. in your role? He's terrific. He's been terrific. We've had a, a really good relationship. I think, I think, you know, he's probably found it more awkward coming up to having to make a, a tough decision together. Um, by the end of it, I think he's he's found that difficult because he um, he's a very loyal man. Um, I understand, you know, that uh, he he is very successful in his business. But I think if you work hard for him, he. He respects that and repays that in his respect as well. Um, you know, I was going to mention Simon. I was also going to mention Gary Hetherington. Terrific fellow. And he's, you know, been a huge part of our sport for many years. He's a, and a great ideas man and a great, you know, visionary in, in many respects. Do you think someone like that needs to <coughs> help run the game a bit more? I'm not sure that Gary's right for that now. Um, at a certain stages in his career, you know, I think he has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think from from behind the scenes almost and pulled the strings. Uh, um, <laughs> but that's just a hunch. Um, but, he, you know, he's been very good at that and he's been great for our sport. Um, he was really good to work for. He, um, he gave me a lot of freedom within um, the environment that I worked with him and he picked he picked you know what i was capable of and and gave me room to do that um he supported where i needed to um you know he carries uh, you know he was a good boss to have he was supportive and you know he uh, like all of us had some frailties on here and there but i think um we helped each other with our strengths and weaknesses and that was a a good partnership as well uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and to spend quite a bit of time with you in the last couple of years. Mm. Our journey at Rugby and wouldn't be anywhere near as interesting without you for 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 a show. And I uh, wish every luck and success in it, whatever you do. And hopefully, this game can get back to where it needs to be. That's that's my hope. My too, my too. Um, it's given me so much in terms of pleasure in my life. I've been doing it since I was six year old. You know, professionally for. I don't know, uh, let me add it up, 38 years or something professionally. So 
I, I care about it. I'm, you know, it saddens me to talk about it in the way that I do. I'm, but I'm doing what you're doing, speaking honestly about it. And I'm also doing a little bit of it on behalf of how some of us are feeling within the game too. You know, and there's some people who can't say what they actually feel, you know, for reasons I mentioned before. So, you know, I I only hope that this game goes on to be great. I, I think you still do a great job, you know, and, and what you're doing in the promotions last week, um, a couple of weeks ago with that game was unreal, you know, to get six... Six thousand there uh, on a on a um, Wednesday, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, unreal. You know that's promotion. That's you know picking your audience. That's promoting things well. Um, keep up the good work. Whether it's power station, factory, or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, Spec, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome back to Rubem. I'm Alex Simmons and I'm joined by three of the tourists. The girls actually went down under for the first, it, it was groundbreaking. The first girls on tour to Australia. I've got Casey, Elliot and Millie. Casey, Firstly, looking back, it was two years ago now. Did you think you were kind of making history at the time? No. <laughs> no, we just thought it were something for us to improve on cause, because we were winning games over here all the time and it, we just needed a challenge, really. It certainly was a challenge, Millie. It was a, it was a tough tour. What do you remember about the tour? <laughs> really hard, like, every player came against it were just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's but then again we learnt from it every single time we've played Ellie, looking back on that time now it's two years ago how's the game the girls game improved since then uh, i think teams have got a lot better around here and like more girls have joined so it's just getting bigger and better outstanding girls well right now we're going to see how you girls get on at the uh, resource crossbar challenge and then we're going to go over to the theatre to see the play The Rook which is actually all about your journey. Was it weird to see the journey uh, on, on, on stage? Very weird. It, like every little bit we just thought oh yeah that's from that bit. Fantastic. Let's see how these girls get on in the crossbar challenge. Stacey Fletcher, Debbie's mate, fastest swinger in West. <laughs> Sarah Fletcher, utility. I'm Casey Rose, you're Gacinda's fullback. I'm Claire Barnes, I play loose forward. AK Big Eater. Names I've been knows them, I'm Tang. And I'm a second round. <laughs> I'm really old, so I also know as Big Willie. Trying to play winger, my nickname's Jin. Caroline Johnson, nickname Kaz. Taylor. 
screw off. Debbie Smith prop bowl. Stacey Smith. I'm a playwright. I've you know been a playwright for 30 odd years, um, so I've been around a while. And uh, I was asked if I would write a play about uh, rugby league based on um, Batley Bulldogs Pro Club. Um, and I said, yeah, great. Um, met fans, uh, ex-players, lots of people, and then I heard about the, the girls' team. And um, I asked if I could go, go and watch them train. And um, you know, I went to see them train. I met some of the girls afterwards and um, the coach, Craig. And I knew straight away, this, this is where the play is. And the play obviously is inspired by uh, the girls team that I coached, that I've coached for a number of years. Um, they went to Australia as the undefeated black girls team in the UK and they went to take on the four, the four of the top teams in Australia. Um, Kevin got invited along and yeah, the, the rest is history. The, the players here, it's opening night so the girls are looking forward to it. It's a bit surreal. I, know, I knew nothing about rugby league. Um, I knew nothing about Batley, and I knew even less about teenage girls. But do you know what? That's my job. And the one thing I'm good at is I know how to empathise. I know how to imagine yourself in other, other people's situations and write from that perspective. So I, I'm not frightened by any subject matter now. Uh, the, the trip was exciting. It's like, it's like people keep saying it, but it's like literally like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm never gonna, I'm, I'll probably never play rugby over there again. It's, um, it was a big step forward for us lot as a, like a, bat, like a Batley group. So it was just weird, it was, it was good fun. We played three game, four games. We lost three of them and played, uh, won one. But all of the games were all competitive and they were all amazing, all the girls. We um, trained on the beach. We went to water parks, theme parks, we did everything, it was amazing. The tour of Australia were like, it was very, very tough. There were some big girls that we had to play against, but, and the heat were hot, but it was just amazing. It was so inspirational and it just inspired us all to carry on. I mean, the, the teams that they played out there, the, the, the Australians picked us some tough, tough opposition. We played the grand final winners in Queensland at club level. We played a representative team from Sunshine Coast. We then played the grand final runners up at Queen, in, from Queensland, and that's the team that we beat, Bean Lee. And then we played the Australian schools champions, Merry Mac High. So they, they were all tough games. Being here tonight, you know, is a real buzz, with, especially with Craig being here and, uh, and the girls, you know, and their families, because, you know, they really were the inspiration for this play. I think the play is good for women's rugby league because people can watch it and see what rugby league can bring and what can come out of it. The story is about like the journey and how girls rugby can. It's just the same as boys rugby, and it needs to be more like out there, and other girls should join in. Maybe girls who haven't played rugby or are too scared to play rugby before, maybe with this play, they might feel like we've done it, so they might want to do it. I think this is a good thing for rugby league because it might um, make more people get involved in rugby. Um, I think since I first started playing girls rugby league, it's really improved, and like there's leagues now, and women's games developing a lot more. It's getting good. The, the play is, you know, it's a full-on entertaining play, but it does go deeper than that because you know there are deeper issues that I'm interested in, and um, you know, a town like Batley is trying to work out a lot of problems and you know reinvent themselves, uh, you know, as a former mill town and all that finds its way into the play. Apart from the rugby, they got, they got an education in, you know, in life and just, it just developed, you know, they've come on so much as young adults now and uh, I don't think they'll ever forget that too and I don't think they'd be where they are now if it weren't for rugby. You know, as a result of the play, you know, uh, obviously I went to see, you know, uh, not just the girls play, but went to see 
the Bulldogs play, and um, I, I, it's a great sport to watch. You know, I, I'm you know, certainly drawn into um, watching rugby in a way that I wasn't before, you know. From the boundary of Mount Pleasant, looking out across the valley, lies a classic sweep of northern industrial archaeology. This settlement, called Batley, is carved from brutal rock. The blackened brick of Victorian viaducts and rolling mills defines the shape of our society. There was a time these valleys were the playground of kings who claimed their sport was ordained by God. Until their power was tackled by noblemen in battle after bloody battle. In time, the birthright of the aristocracy was snatched from them by the industrialists who easily outpaced them with their power of money but went on to score a lasting victory. Well then the working man created a rook and with his labour forced the bourgeoisie to share their wealth and settle for democracy. Finally, in these epic heartlands, woman wrestled free from the ribcage of man to take her place in the arena and stake her claim in the game we call society. There are those who would turn back the clock, but the genie is out of the box. The sport can never be the same again. There have been too many game changes. Cos this girl can. And this girl can. And this girl can. And this girl can. Determined to play the Northern game. <laughs> Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to part three here at BEM. Super League Dream Team is always an exciting occasion to see which players have deemed to be the top 13 players in the competition by the people that really know the media. Now, I thought when John Ziddick could be here and he hadn't turned up with like a minute to go, I thought, is he, put, is he gonna be in the team? Is he walking out? It didn't happen. You walked in <laughs> yeah. two minutes late, mate. Yeah. But you've got only one Leeds player in the team when you've had such a great season. Yeah, but looking across that lineup, it is outstanding. It's a great team, and you can't argue with most of them. I've, I've never been in Super League Dream Team. I wasn't a million miles off, I don't think, in 2011, but they put a 42-year-old Steve Menzies in there. And you know me, like, Simo, I don't like being beat, so I'm going for 42-year-old, and I'm going to get in that year. But uh, just looking at that, that back row there, Mike McMeekin and Ben murdoch Masilla have been outstanding this year. Got to take that off to every player that's in there, and congratulate them as well. Mate, a few surprises, Sebastian Ikehifo yeah. from Huddersfield. Um, it wasn't in my voting, yep. because to be honest, I probably haven't seen enough Huddersfield, that's probably a bit of a detrimental factor to some of them lads who play at the clubs that are on TV all the time or at them big games all the time, but he has been outstanding. He has, and I think he's shown in the Huddersfield team that struggled at times, and to be, to be fair, I've seen you interview him some more, he's the first player I've ever seen get interviewed by Alex and not look like a dwarf. Um, <laughs> he's a big guy and he does shrug you off, you can imagine how strong he is uh, to play against, but credit to him, There's, you know, I come in, I was, I was thinking about front rows, and people like Scott Taylor a nightmare to put down. I think Adam Cuthbertson has been great for us this year, yeah, but I, I can't, I can't argue with him. I think he's played really well, and Sebastian deserves his, his uh, place in the lineup. Right, let's go out and meet some of the dream team and hear what they've got to say about their inclusion in the special 13 players. Right, I'm here with the Super League dream team right winger, Mahir Fenua, well deserved as well. He's caused me all kinds of <laughs> nightmares on the pitch this year. But the first question I've got to uh, ask you is what's your game plan for this weekend? Um, <laughs> run as much as we can at James Jones Buchanan. <laughs> ah, <nah. laughs> Again, spot me up. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, you now it's going to be a big arcs this week. Um, Leeds at Leeds, it's always tough playing Leeds and even harder when you're playing them ahead of me in a semi final. Um, probably do our video tomorrow and, and see where we um, where we got to attack them and you know try and find their weaknesses in their team. But um, couldn't we really say at the moment, don't want to give it too much away. Absolutely, mate, absolutely. How much does it mean to you to get that Super League Dream Team? Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased. Um, you know, there's some great wingers out there, and likes of Ryan Hall and Jermaine McGilvery. Um, you know, so I was really pleased to get notified that I've made the team for this year, so yeah. 
to, to Bastian, congratulations on getting in the team, first of all. I think we first saw you this year, each year up at Leeds, throwing everyone around. How, was, how have you enjoyed this season? No, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I've had a full season here in um, Super League and, you know, it's great. And what about Huddersfield? Has, has the town welcomed you? The boys welcomed you? Yeah, the town, the fans, everyone welcomes me and it's... You know, I'm, I'm really honoured to play for the Giants. You've had, a, you've had big shoes to fill as well because you fill in the shoes of Earl Crabtree, a club legend. Um, has there been any pressure on you to fill his boots? Yeah, yeah, because he's, um, he's not only a club legend, he's entered the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah, I know. And the last Hall of Fame guy was in the 1970s, so <laughs> there's a 20 or 30 year gap. Sean Lachlan, he's a consistent man and it wasn't until I actually played with him for England that I knew how good he was uh, and it's fantastic to see you again in the Dream Team Are you made up with uh, being included again this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's always, always nice to get that nod. I think you, you look at some of the spots available there and you could, you, could, you could make an argument for about four or five people in every position so to get, to get the nod over some of those names being mentioned, it's, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's interesting, you know, winning it last year, and I've been fortunate to have been in teams that have won it, and we saw how good Warrington were last year, and they really dropped off this year without any real signs or understanding as to why. But just to explain out there how hard it is sometimes to back up a year after winning a grand final trophy. Yeah, I think there's a bit of expectation on you, I think, when, you, when you've been there and performed and, and got your hands on the silverware. And yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a big motivator for the boys, but this year it's, it's, not, kind of, it's not kind of transferred that way. We, uh, we had a great start to the season, winning the World Cup Challenge, getting our hands on that. Yeah, I was there. I loved yeah. it as well. Yeah. Only time I've ever been a Wigan fan, <laughs> but I, I did I did support it that day, it was good. Yeah, but it's just not not happened for us. We, we, we managed to get to the Challenge Cup final, and we, even after that we lost, but we, we kind of had a good performance against Saints and Hull. Got ourselves, got the, the opportunity where it was in our hands to, to kick on, and yeah, just kind of faded off at the end of the season, which is disappointing. It means the pre-season is going to be a real tough one now, and a lot of thinking time before we start next year. How are you feeling? I feel good now, mate. Feel real good, real positive. Potentially semi, definitely final. Potentially, I'm just looking at Thursday night. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm it's day by day, just building up the re, uh, rehab and stuff like that. To potentially playing Thursday, I'll have a fitness test Wednesday. So, uh, no, I, I'm feeling positive. Free for Alby. <laughs> Free for Alby. I am feeling positive, mate. Hopefully play Thursday. We're not calling Albert Killer, it's Albert Goldthorpe, the one and only. <laughs> mate, you got that for the third time, never been done before. No, like I say, it's, it's good to be nominated for these accolades and you keep playing well and I'm in a real good team that, that makes me look good as well. So, no, look, it's been a great season. And we're not looking to finish yet. What a season it's been. Quite a few of your teammates in the team. One glaring omission for me is Paul McShane. Yeah, I just... He got my vote. It's five points for Hooker. I just said that to someone else. Look, um, Parcel's been outstanding. So yeah, you, has, you, you can't, can't, knock, you can't him. knock him. This is why it's so tough. You've got you've got Maka, and I think Maka's been absolutely fantastic this year. And to be honest, I, I couldn't rate him any higher. He's a massive part of my game as well. But then you've got Parcel, who's done, who's worked wonders with Leeds, hasn't he? Yeah. So it, look, I think. It's tough for Maka to miss out, but he's missed out to a good one, hasn't he? Well done, congratulations for getting in the Super League Dream Team. No, thank How you. Feel, Paul? Yeah, it's good. It's, it's a big honour, obviously. There was a lot of competition, I guess, for the position this year, so no, it's, it's really good and really honoured. And it's amazing, really. You've come in, and when you talk about blessings in disguise, when James Seguiaro disappeared and went AWOL, and we all thought, oh no, what are we going to do here? But sometimes these adversities, come out in something even better because this guy's come in and no hooker in the history of Leeds Rhinos has scored as many tries as you this season. How does that feel to come in and, and make history in year one? No, it's really good. I'm really enjoying the year. I was always, I guess, confident in my ability making the move over here. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. And I knew the history that Leeds had there in last year in the position. But uh, no, it's been a really good year. And it's blokes like you, I guess, sort of making me come over and fit in. Everyone's been so welcoming. It's made the move really easy. Now, winning's king. You've come over here to win silverware. We've got a massive game against all this weekend. How do you see that going? And how, how big would it be for you to make a grand final in year one as well? Yeah, for me, it'd be uh, massive. I guess that's why you want to come over. You want to play in those big big, big games. So, um, But for the club, I think it would be a massive occasion. Obviously, I wasn't there uh, last year, but um, speaking to you guys like yourself and all the, all the team to get from uh, where they were last year to the grand final, that's, uh, that's, a, big, that's a big thing. So um, obviously, you've got Mags and Rob uh, retiring and moving on. So, no, it's, uh, it's a massive occasion, but it all, it all starts Friday night. Um, obviously, Hull, Hull beat us in the Challenge Cup semi-final. 
and uh, I know we haven't really spoke about it, but I still remember that. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's a big occasion. Mate, you got loads of your teammates in Dream Team. Few omissions like Paul McShane, but Parcel's been great this year. Um, so it was always going to be a tough decision between them two. But you've got a very, very talented bunch of players uh, that have come to CAS. A few probably lads who didn't achieve what they could have achieved elsewhere. And do you think that's down to, not just Daryl, because I think you've got, with, with Shez and Danny Orr, three blokes there who could all be great head coaches? Yeah, 100%. And um, so I just got an interview earlier and they, they, they said, um, what's what's better be, when I was at Leeds or at Castleford? And um, what I said was, Leeds have been a championship uh, championship team for years. So if they've ever lost one or two key players, they've always replaced them with one or two key players. And, and I mean your top players. Yeah. Castleford have, have started from like ashes really and they've built their way up and uh, like you say they've, they've probably they've probably got players where people won't batter an island at but the the work ethic and honest 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 to god the, the train so hard um daryl trains is really hard we've got shez we've got danny or uh, daryl powell all, all all have been terrific with players themselves um, all laughs as well all laughs all create all creativity and i think that shows uh, the way the way that Castleford play and the lads put the faith in the coaches and they, they, they put it back to us and it's just a great relationship and uh, I think that's that's one thing that I'm quite proud of being at this club this year that, that it's all it's all clicking uh, so I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. There's a trip to Australia, you're going to lead the England team out, uh, are you prepared, are you looking forward, are you motivated for that World Cup? Yeah 100%, I think when, when you're not invo involved in the semis and the, and the finals I think there's that bit, bit of a break yeah. where you, 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 you kind of sit down and look at what you're doing and I think it's a good opportunity now for us to kind of really focus in before we, before we leave for that, that trip or hopefully be on, involved in there and yeah, it's something I'm really, really looking forward to. When I look at that dream team there, it must be one of the heaviest dream teams that's ever been picked. It's massive and I just wondered, last question here, when you go over at World Cup we've always played our own brand of rugby league and this year Super League looks a little bit heavier. Do you think that's something we need to use, uh, utilise over in the World Cup this year? Yeah, I think, yeah, it, 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 it's a big squad when you look at, you look at that team. I feel some of the boys out there dwarfing me but yeah, it's, um, I think we've, we've been we've been best when we've gone over there and played where we want to play. Exactly. Yep. And, uh, I think w when we do that it's sometimes a little bit different than what, what the Aussies, di Aussies dish up and um, I think that, that element of um, surprise if you, if you want to say from our point of view is I think that's definitely something we, we need to go there and do. Well congratulations Lockers and uh, all the very best for this uh, year's World Cup Cheers, campaign. Cheers Thanks mate. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium covering installation or maintenance, spec the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to part four here, Rugby M. In what's going to be a huge week for the four teams contested in the semi-finals, we caught up with all four coaches and got their opinions on the big games. Without a doubt, Coach of the Year, um, outstanding season. But really, I'm going to put this to you, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, yeah, well, I wouldn't say it doesn't mean anything, but yeah, you've got to move on, because yeah, that's, that's, that's I mean. gone, yeah, that's behind us. So now it's, um, yeah, we've got to come up with an outstanding performance to beat St. Helens, haven't we? That's, that's all that matters, knockout game. Great opportunity for us, just got to take it. The, the, the boys have been fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you see here today that there's there's six of the players in the dream team. Uh, got two two of our players uh, nominated for Man of Steel. Um, there were probably a few of our players a little bit unlucky not to be here as well. So well, overall, they've been unbelievable. The players, just the way they've the way they've applied themselves in in practice, the discipline that they've had um, on and off the, the field has has been outstanding. And and here we are, one game away from from a grand final, and um, it's about delivering our best performance on the night. Looking at the big game against Hull, um, obviously they've got over you in the semi-final of the cup, but and they're a tough team to play. Mm. Uh, Hull, a big side. If, 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 did you learn from that game? Is that going to affect how you play this game? It'll have some bearing for sure. And you know where, where we got exposed there was uh, we'll have a bearing. And and I think I, you know the biggest credit I can give all is that they didn't do anything in the semi that surprised us. We knew what was coming. Played really well, didn't they? But we couldn't stop it. 
and you know, we, me and you could sit down and look at the video and you could tell me where we could have been good, better. And I'd agree with you that we didn't nail some stuff on game day, but I don't think that we were that, that bad in the semi-final. Now we started to lose energy and lose belief in the second half and the score blew out and it became a really disappointing day. But in terms of performance, I don't think we were way off, but Hull, I just thought, nailed some stuff in that first 20, 25 minutes. And we've been there ourselves that when you nail those early exchanges, it's hard to fight back that. It's an hard, once you've lost momentum in a game, semi-final, Charles Cup, it's an hard thing to turn around. What a year it's been for this man, uh, Lee Radford. Won the Challenge Cup, got married to a, to a girl who's 10 times better than he should ever have, without a doubt. And now, mate, you're on the semi-finals after it looked like he might not get there after a couple of a tough weeks against Wigan and Leeds. Uh, you pulled it through, finished in third. Now you go away to see your old mate, Brian Mack. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, it's a huge challenge as well, Simo. We, um, November, when we came together, we, you know, we set a couple of... Um, internal goals, you know, one of them was to retain the Towns Cup as hard as we possibly could. You know, we ticked that box. The second one was to get in the four. Um, we left that as late as we could, obviously, on Friday night. But the, you know, the third one was to give ourselves an opportunity to go to a grand final. We, we've got that opportunity on, on Friday night against, a, you know, arguably one of the best teams in the competition. But, um, you know, we'll back ourselves against anybody on our, on our night and, and we're going to have to bring our best on Friday night. Are you, are you happy now? You've got the squad where you want to be. Going into semi-final, you must have been a bit stressed out last week. Yeah, I'm definitely happy. You know, um, the players have worked so hard. You know, ever since I've got here, we've, it feels like we've had to win every game. You know, we've had some some important games we've had to win. We had to string some wins together, and, and the players have worked really hard. And, and I'm thrilled to, you know, hopefully that you know continues on this Thursday. I think you've had a really good response to a set of lads that were very close to Kieran Cunningham on a number of levels emotionally, like it's connected with the club. Kieran, he runs deep at Saints, and you've managed to galvanise them and bring them together. Who's been, obviously everyone has a player's player, who's been the coach's player for you so far this year? Uh, oh, look, I've loved the whole playing group. You know, as you said, Kieran's a fantastic history of the club. Uh, probably helped me not being from here and coming over, being a fresh start, you know, for the playing group and, and the history of him at the club. So, um, look, I've loved the whole playing group, but. Percy's probably my favourite. I love the prince. He's oh, the uh, prince. Yeah. <laughs> the king of the prince. Yeah, well, yeah well, he's definitely the prince. Uh, uh, yeah, he just, uh, the way he plays is fantastic and he gives me a lot of laughs as he does the other players. So, yeah, but as a rap with everyone. He's certainly special, he's Percy. Yeah. If you know him, he's a top lad. I remember once on England camp, uh, Kev Brown was telling me he'd uh, poured a drink of uh, uh, apple juice and it was actually honey. And he tried to drink a cup of honey. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does stuff like that every day, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to spend two hours in the car with him coming up here. So, and the traffic's worse going on, so I can't wait to spend four hours with him. Pumped. Uh, how do you think the season's been for Leeds? Because I think you're only two points less than the 2015 season, uh, so it's been successful in that respect. Yeah, pretty positive. Uh, I don't think we've lost two league games back to back. We've only lost a couple of times at home. Uh, beat every team in the league that there's no uh, except Castleford so far uh, so loads of positives been a couple of big blips there was a big blip at the start of the year and a couple of disappointing losses throughout the year but you're going to get those you know that's uh, but we get reminded most weeks when we've lost by everybody because of what went on in 2016 and what went on in 2016 meant that our margin for error was just removed Everybody stuck by us in 2016, and we had a, a huge amount of loyalty and, uh, and support shown. But with that came a, a, uh, a very short, a short tolerance level for when we did lose in 2017, and we felt that this year, which uh, just off a straight bat, I think we've had a good season. And uh, you know, we had some players come through and played really well, and some of our juniors have played even more games. Matt Parcells coming and nailed some stuff, and with how we're going to play next year and some of the progression we'll make next year is, is really positive. But everywhere I speak to, there's a, there's a, there's a subtext or a, an overtone of, yeah, you've had a good season, but if you don't win anything, we're going to judge you. And uh, it's, it's an arse environment to be in at the moment. And the man next to you has been a freak. Some of the tries he scored this year has been outstanding where he just gets up and keeps running and weaves in and, get, and he's got amazing hands. What, what's he given your team? Um, 
I think he's got natural instinct, that striker's instinct in football of knowing where the football's going to be and, and where the opportunity's going to arise. You know, some blokes will sit back on the heels and some blokes will, will sniff in and around it. And I think he's got a real canny knack of, of being in the right place at the right time. But, uh, you know, he's, he's like a man of rubber. He's, he's very tough as well. He gets banged about a, a fair bit and, and plays well above his weight. But he, um, he keeps coming. Oh, you've had a great season, mate. Going from the red and white to the black and white is never easy. But you've took it in your stride. Have you enjoyed your season with Radders and the boys? Yeah, enjoyed it very much. Um, you know, kind of found that spark and, you know, the love for the game again. And, you know, thanks to Radders and, and, and the boys and, you know, uh, for their support as well. You've been playing with Mark Snead. You've got a great combination with him. Is, he, is that the best partnership you've had in your career? Do you really feed off each other? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's, it's a bit of a different one, you really. Um, you know, also played along, you know, uh, runners as as well, and um, you know to to play alongside an organizer and a kicker and, um, saves me doing that. <laughs> and um, you know, I can I can really look on my own natural game and you know um, and try and bring my natural game to the to the table each week. Being so dominant all year, it's a bit crazy that you could lose one match and not get to the grand final. I've, I like the old way where you get a couple of shots at it. Would you go back to that, even if you wasn't in this position now, or would you keep it the same? Do you think the structure going forward needs to change? Uh, well, look, uh, the, the big thing for me is the, the history of the, the sport is being compromised. You know, we're changing all the time from one format to another. Um, you know, if you look at Australia, for example, they've kept the eight all the way through um, pretty much. It's changed slightly uh, over the years, but it's not too high floated, which th this is at, at the moment. Um, but at the end of the day, look, it's it's a, a knockout game. You know, however you come to this point, it's semi-final with an opportunity to get to a grand final. And um, regardless of all that, um, whether you change the structure or not, it doesn't matter for this one. We're in a semi-final. You couldn't, you couldn't have a, a better opportunity. We're at home and we've just got to deliver. And uh, oh, we, we're in a good spot. We're in a good spot. All boys are confident, looking forward to the challenge. and. Um, Thursday night's where it's all at for us. Uh, what's different about this week from a coaching perspective? Oh, not a lot, to be honest. You know, we've just had a crack on as normal. We, we've enjoyed uh, every week. We've had to win a lot of big games, and, and that continues on for us this Thursday. So we understand it's going to be a really tough task. You know, Cass have, have you know, performed well all year. But, uh, but I'm really happy with how we've improved as the season's gone on and I think we're, you know, we're as good a chance as any to, to win on Thursday and, and we need to play well, but I'm sure we can. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. 